Here's a quick background for anybody who is not following along in the whole saga or if it's months later and you just stumbled across this video through a search or something like that. I have been troubleshooting vibration on my copter for about a week now, one thing and another. I had a bad motor bell, I had some broken standoffs on my flight controller, and then my flight controller's gyro gave out, to put it kindly. So uh, now I have a brand new flight control board, new motor bell, everything should be wonderful, but the vibration is still not good enough. Uh, my motors are just a little beat up and grumbly, but I don't want to replace them. So I put some vibration damping uh, bumpers on my flight control board, and this is the first flight that I did after I did that. Now you're caught up, enjoy. Okay, this is my first tuning flight with the bumpers on to hopefully keep me from having to replace all these motors. I feel like the motors fly fine. They're they're just obviously a little banged up and noisy. They have no obvious defects like the bells, the spate, the gap between the bell and the base is consistent. Uh, they've just been, I guess, banged around enough that they're off balance. I don't know. But I don't want to replace them. I just want to be able to tune the copter a little, little tighter without having oscillations and noise go crazy, especially on the yaw axis. So I put the flight controller on rubber bumpers and um, there's a pretty big difference. If you compare that to one of the previous videos, the yaw gyro is much cleaner, much cleaner. Now we can see here I'm still getting some oscillations, so I still need to refine my tune a little bit, but overall things are much better. So let's now just take a look at the tune. I feel like we're finally in a position where if the gyros aren't clean, then it, you kind of need to get that fixed before you start tuning. And if you just absolutely cannot get the gyros clean, then you may be able to do things with filtering or with your tune, but, but that's always going to be a limit on your tune. The cleaner your gyros, the sharper you can tune. That's, that's a fact. So um, let's take a look at roll. And here we're flying. We can see the P-term is, is moving. It's definitely going back and forth. Still moving here. Nothing uh, out of the ordinary yet. I mean, I, I want the P-term to be active. Here we're starting to see some definite oscillations. You can see I've dropped the throttle and I'm turning right. By the way, I don't have high def video for this. I, I, I knocked the high def camera off my, in a crash uh, yesterday and I just haven't bothered to put it back on. So you'll have to bear with that. But here we are, we've dropped the throttle and we're turning. We're getting some oscillations. And strong oscillations here. Uh, so roll P gain might be a little high. Definite oscillations here. Definite oscillations here. Definite oscillations here. Um, and then if we raise the throttle, we're getting uh, oscillations as well. Um, I kind of wonder if now that I have got the noise under control, I should work on raising my D gain instead of lower, normally if you've got P-term oscillations like this, the thing to do is to lower your P-gain. But I've been knocking my D-gain down so much to try and address this noise that maybe now that the noise is gone, I can bring the D-gain up and that, that way I can leave my P-gains where they are instead of having to bring the P-gains down. So let's have a look at the copter. Roll D is seven. If I take that up to 12, let's see what happens. Because I just don't see any times when the D term is getting crazy. See right here, while the P term is getting active, the D term is, is much smaller. And the D term is never really having those sharp, spiky, high frequency flip outs. The D term is always reasonably smooth. And so here we're starting to get some spikiness. So I may end up I may end up knocking P down, but let's do one thing at a time. Let's raise D a little bit on roll and see if that helps. We'll look at pitch. Now pitch, I know pitch I have a problem because when I got to full throttle I heard uh, strong oscillations and from the gyros I could see that it was on the pitch axis. So here is a classic P term oscillation. 
consistent frequency, a high frequency in this case. Uh, and again, notice that the D term is not as big as the P term. It's, it's closer to proportional, but it's always smaller and it's never like flipping out. So I'm gonna do the same thing on pitch. I'm gonna try raising the D term. Uh, let's try 15. And then if we look at yaw, let's have a look at yaw. Yaw is the axis that got cleaned up the most. And sure enough, we can see that the yaw, which was super spiky most of the time, it's still a little spiky, but it's, it's much more in control. I'm not sure what to do with yaw. I know that in Betaflight 261, the D term has been removed from yaw. So I'm, I think that's probably the D. I've always thought that the D term is less significant and less uh, important on yaw than it is on the others. I am a little worried that if I raise the P gain, I'll increase this, the, the frequency of this oscillation a little. Let's raise the D term a little on yaw and see if, uh, if, we, if we see an improvement or if things get worse. So that's what I'm going to go with, and I will be back. Okay, let's have a look at what that produced. No, oh, let's look at the gyros first. Gyros still look okay. Still seeing some oscillations here. This back and forth here is is some kind of strong oscillation to, at, at high throttle. So let's zoom in and look at that. You can see the gyro going back and forth on pitch. We'll look at the pitch axis then. Okay, so now you see the difference here. Now the D term is just as strong as the P term. The high frequency oscillations are still there. And in fact, if anything, they've been accentuated. They're higher frequency. Um, so we don't, in this case, have the D term taming the P term, as, as they say it's supposed to do. It seems to be contributing to the problem. Um, I could hear at high throttle that, that there's a, the oscillation was different, was higher frequency. So I don't think we really improved things. See here, now if we could look at the oscillation, we can see that both P and D are strongly oscillating. We haven't really t tamed things though. In addition, I'm gonna find a place, there should be a place where I did a flip here. Yeah, see it's oscillating a lot more. So we haven't made things better, we've made things worse. See, it's just as I scroll by, oh yeah, that's that's horrible right there. So we definitely made things worse. Um, yep, yeah, definitely made things worse, not better. Let's go back and let's take another approach. So we're going to put the D gains down again. Let's just put them like that. How did y'all do? Did y'all get any better? That's too bad. I had the microphone off to the side. I apologize for that. Did y'all get any better? The D term is more active. It looks more variable. It doesn't look as regular. I don't think it got, no, that's not better. That's not better. That's a, that's, that's a pretty sloppy mess right there. Look how uneven it is. It's sort of all over the place in amplitude and yeah, that's not better. Okay, so we didn't make anything better. I think I still think D could probably be a little higher than it was. I'm going to back it down and we're going to back the P gain down now to try to get rid of some of those oscillations. Dare I say you try using TPA? Oh man. Uh, let's let's see. Well, you never know. Let's try that. Okay, let's try that. We'll try again, uh, and I'll be back. Well, subjectively, that was a pretty big improvement. Um, unfortunately, I didn't put the SD card back in my open log, so I will not have a log to show you, but the only thing I think I'm gonna change is I had a smooth punch out, so I'm gonna drop TPA back down a little and see if I can keep the smooth punch out with a little less TPA. Okay, so I'm gonna go fly again, this time with my black box uh, log. SD card in. All right, guys, this is the first one where I had no real complaints. Um, I could, it's possible I could sharpen up the tune a little bit, but I didn't see anything.
that made me unhappy. So that's a good place to be. That's where I like to be. Here are the PIDs I'm running with. And let's take a look at black box and see if we can come up with any way to get it a little better. But it's flying okay now. So I'm going to remember this one going forward and make sure I can come back here if I make any changes that I end up not being completely satisfied. I can always come back here, sort of snapshot this. Gyros. Gyros look okay. At high throttle, we can see we're still getting some oscillation on pitch. Roll and a little bit on roll too. Uh, the motor sounded smooth. I didn't hear very much oscillation. It did sound a little rougher on full throttle punch out than when I had TPA at 20. So I think, let's just go ahead and do that right now. Let's put TPA back to 20. I know some of you are thinking, I thought you said that uh, most copters shouldn't need TPA with modern versions of Betaflight. And I, I feel that way, but um, you know, I've got, I've got uh, motors that are a little beat up. They're not as clean as they could be. And I'm trying to compensate for that. So. There you go. This is not, this is the scenario where maybe it's appropriate. We'll look at the pitch axis first. We can definitely see oscillations at full throttle. Notice that the D is now a little bit less than the P. The oscillations are a little bit slower. I know for, from experience with this copter, but if I lower my P gains very much below this point, maybe I could go to like 5.8 and 3.8 at the absolute lowest. I know that if I lower them very much, then the copter gets sloshy at mid throttle and it's not good. In fact, maybe what I'll do, where do the oscillations come in? Here's where the oscillations start coming in as I raise the throttle. Right about here is where the oscillations start. 15, 15. No, that's. That's where you want to be lowering. And then they're really hard. They start to get really hard, 17, around 17. So maybe what I'll do, yeah, maybe I'll knock it down just a bit. Yeah. See, on full throttle, roll looks okay. See, no strong, hard oscillations. That's great. Roll looks, that looks really good. Let's find another high throttle period. Mid throttle, yeah. Mid high, yeah. Roll looks really good. It's active, but it's not hyperactive. Here it's starting to get a little oscillatey. That's okay. I'm, I feel okay about all that. The D line looks a little sloppy, a little unsmooth. I think I'm going to leave that alone though. Yeah, roll looks, there's an oscillation right there. There's an actual oscillation. Bad ones. But it ends pretty quickly. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Um, Other thing I'm going to try now, I'm going to try raising P on yaw because I know that I've lowered P on yaw a lot to try to compensate for that noise. And I do feel like a good yaw P term helps helps improve the, the cornering of the copter and this, your ability to hit precise lines. So we're going to sort of pay attention to how active the yaw P term is and see if it gets like much more oscillating or vibrating. The other thing I want to check is I want to check my motors and see if my motors are generally pretty even with each other or if there's a motor that might be have a physical problem. Uh, I pressed the shafts in a little bit to tighten up the bell so the bell didn't have as much slop and I, I accidentally pressed one of the shafts a little too hard and the motor uh, felt a little tighter. So I wanted to make sure that wasn't binding and it doesn't look like it is like right here. All the motors certainly look like they're spinning pretty evenly, so that's not really a problem. If uh, that motor was binding, we would see that motor higher than the others because it was having to work harder to make the same amount of thrust. It's notable here that this motor is bottomed out at min throttle, and you might be wondering what's going on there. 
that's not in and of itself a problem. When the copter goes to idle, one of the motors is going to bottom out, and the others are going to be moving to keep the copter stabilized. Okay, as long as that motor comes back smoothly and without you know disrupt disrupting the copter, then uh, that's not an issue. Perhaps I do want to make sure that the motors are starting smoothly. And if one of these motors was like stopping because min throttle was too low and bind or binding up or something, then we would see that motor get out of sync with its partner. So this is a, this is a, what's going on here? We do a front flip and now I guess we're falling at idle. And then as I raise the throttle, both of these back motors come up simultaneously. So the motor that was idle doesn't look like it lags behind or has to push harder than the motor that was uh, that was spinning. So this suggests that min throttle is okay, at least in this case. If we see that the motor that was idle has to push way harder to get going again, we see a spike there before it settles down. That might suggest that min throttle was too low. Okay, everything looks fine there. We'll give it another fly. And you can find the results of that test flight including my thoughts as to what I'm looking for when I'm performing certain maneuvers in a tuning flight session in another video, as we are already 18 minutes into this video, so I think that's plenty long enough. If you stuck with it this long, thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been educational, and as always, happy flying.